if you ask me, I think I was coming in too loud. And then I used the computer because I had some kind of mucus breathing problem or whatever. Making it weirder, I haven't really heard from anyone since Friday afternoon. I did get a small text from an old friend in high school. Oh, um, more like sixth grade than high school, but whatever, whatever. I, um, I noticed that there's all this talk around, like, there's a King Kong movie, I guess the third or fourth, um, fourth time this story has been told about King Kong. Uh, to my knowledge, anyways. Um, wasn't there a King Kong comic book and... Uh, cartoon series, or am I thinking Godzilla? I know Godzilla had a Marvel series, which I didn't really enjoy too much. Wish I had kept some. I actually borrowed some from the library, but then later I found out they were actually giving them away, and I stupidly returned <laughs> when they were actually rightfully uh, mine from the comic book giveaway. <laughs> it was a misunderstanding. I want to tie in uh, the Godzilla movies. That uh, in the first Godzilla movie, it is seen. Um, I don't know why I'm recalling my VHS uh, recording of it. I think I recorded it either off a of television or I taped it from a uh, video store's copy. <laughs> um, obviously, it's long gone though because it's been either taped over or given away or something. Because I have the original movie on Blu ray from Criterion. Um, this is the Raymond Burr version. I remember, like, faintly seeing Godzilla's bones at the end of the movie. But now that we know that there's Son of Godzilla, could that Godzilla in the first movie not have been, say, the female Godzilla? And, uh, she passed on. Obviously killed by Dr. Sarazawa's, uh, I think that's his name, Dr. Sarazawa's Oxygen Destroyer, or whatever it's called. And then, um, how does this go? So, the Godzilla, which is called Gigantus, the fire-breathing monster, but it's supposed to be Godzilla, and Godzilla raids again, is in fact the male Godzilla that we all know and love and are familiar with. That, that's my opinion. Uh, that's my analyses, uh, not analyses, analysis from uh, what I've watched as a child of Godzilla films. So I actually, I, I do believe that. I do believe that Godzilla, um, that is Godzilla. Starting with Gigantus, the fire-breathing monster. Going from there, at the end of the movie, um, if you haven't seen any of these movies, uh, you should. And um, no, I'm not spoiling anything for you because these aren't food. Only food can be spoiled or putrefied like dead bodies and stuff like that. So at the end of the film, uh, Godzilla is buried in ice. And after being buried in ice, in the beginning of King Kong vs. Godzilla, Godzilla emerges out of an iceberg that's floating. And this makes perfect sense. After being buried in ice, obviously Godzilla, the iceberg would sit there while he goes into hibernation. It would eventually slide off. It wasn't a very big island to begin with, so it, it's appropriate that that happened, that movie happened, I believe, in 1955 in Japan. Don't quote me on that. Uh, maybe 56, but the point is, um, Godzilla wouldn't be seen again until 1963. So in that time, it's very possible the ice solidified, became an iceberg, its own weight was too much, it was in the northern latitudes of Japan, Hokkaido, that area, even though the movie took place in Osaka. That, that's quite a ways to go. <laughs> even though Japan is not a large country, it is the size of California in length, so that, that is uh, maybe even longer than California, so that's, that is actually quite a ways to go to um, to fly in those planes from Osaka. Um, so the ice would float down and it's obvious it would reach lower latitudes. I'm, I don't mean equatorial, but lower latitudes by 1963. And uh, voila, there it is. 
Godzilla burst out of the um, iceberg, pissed off, pissed off to all hell. <laughs> he's got a bone to pick, and he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna use Tokyo as the toothpick. Uh, at the end, Godzilla is buried under rubble instead of ice this time, and uh, Godzilla and King Kong fighting cause an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, that makes me laugh. Godzilla and King Kong cause an earthquake, which I guess makes sense. Again, two, I don't know, about 200 foot uh, beings duking it out. And um, somehow Godzilla ends up getting buried, and King Kong goes and takes a swim. He's had it. He, we'll see him again in King Kong Escapes, but um, his timeline has all been ruined. Uh, I don't mean by Toho or anything, I just mean like there's, like, Toho kind of respected, not kind of, they did respect uh, the RKO pictures before. Um, can't count Mighty Joe Young, but there was uh, King Kong and Son of Kong, which were both released in 1933. And no one's seen King Kong for 30 years, except, you know, I mean, people have seen King Kong. I mean, there hasn't been a new King Kong movie. In 30 years, by the point of King Kong versus Godzilla, so it really makes sense that uh, King Kong, whatever, he likes minding his own business. So he's going back to Kong Island, Skull Island, excuse me, Skull Island. Um, some people say he's dragging Godzilla with him, so that way Skull Island and Monster Island are actually the same. But I, I don't see any proof of that. I do see this. In Godzilla vs. The Thing, or Godzilla vs. Mothra, or whatever they want to call it. I'm just going to go Godzilla vs. The Thing, because that's what I have on the, my copy of the movie. It's an original, not a copy copy. It's an actual production. Uh, and on that movie, Godzilla bursts out of the soil. It's been graded and flattened and by the seashore, so like after the earthquake, thing is, this only takes place a year later. <laughs> Whatever. I guess they thought Godzilla was dead, so they had no problem, you know, um, developing over his body or whatever. Uh, at the end of this movie, though, nothing really happens bad to Godzilla or anything like that. The two Mothra larvae go, go away, and then one comes back. He's either one decided to stay or die or whatever. And Godzilla fights Gehedra, the three-headed monster, with Rodan. So that, that ties in two other ser series, actually, by this point. Mothra and Rodan. No other way around that. Um, the, after the defeat here, um, Ghidra, or Ghidorah, or whatever, flies off, and then we have Invasion of the Astro Monster, or Astro Invasion. Whatever. It's the one Godzilla dances on the moon. Um, by this point, yeah, it's pretty much standard uh, run-of-the-mill sequel. Well, more like Bond than anything else. Because, see, um, not so much the first Godzilla movie, but Godzilla raids again to King Kong vs. Godzilla to Godzilla vs. The Thing. All can tie into each other because of the ending. Godzilla gets buried in ice, jumps out of an iceberg. Godzilla gets buried during an earthquake caused by King Kong and him fighting. Godzilla bursts out of the soil. At this point, um, like Godzilla versus the sea monster, uh, uh, angry video game nerd, you know, he points out that this is more of a King Kong script that was hastily rewritten for Godzilla. Okay, I see it. I get it. It's there. All right, that's cool. And then, um, what's the other one here that I'm looking at? Um, after that one is Godzilla, Son of Godzilla. Son of Godzilla can also be seen as a sequel. So the Godzilla egg was laid, and then Godzilla shows up, but not the female Godzilla. So that goes back into saying that the Godzilla that was killed in Godzilla King of the Monsters, the very first movie, was in fact a female Godzilla, so it should have been Godzilla Queen of the Monsters. 
So she was. When I played Terminator 2 with the Sega Menacer, I'm not afraid of deadly hunter killers, the indestructible T1000, endless endoskeletons, the evil Skynet. Nothing. Bobby, come give your Aunt Bertha a big kiss. Well, almost nothing. Tiger puts arcade action in the palm of your hand. Games like Batman. Choose your weapons in this four-level game of action as you jump from rooftop to rooftop trying to get through six vicious henchmen to get the Joker. But can you defeat him to win? Also available, Tiger's Batman Risk Game for the time of your life. Tiger LCD Video Games. Video excitement in the palm of your hand. Killed by Dr. Sarazawa's oxygen destroyer, but before that she had laid this egg which was meant to incubate. Um, it was caused to hatch and develop faster due to the weather experiments caused there by someone who looks uncannily like Dr. Sarazawa. <laughs> it sounds like him in the Japanese dub. It's the same actor. I'm, I was going the long way trying to make a dumb joke there. It's the same actor. And he plays one of the scientists on this island. He's a half Korean, half Japanese uh, actor. He, I think he grew up in Japan, though. So I don't know if he actually spoke any Korean. And um, he was supposed to come back in Godzilla in 1985, but he passed. He passed away. But anyways, let me get let me get back to this. Um, now the next movie is Destroy All Monsters. Everyone's there except King Kong. Either Toho's rights ran out or whatever. And there's a few other people who are there who have like absolutely nothing to do with Godzilla, but they're there. In the meantime, there's Gorgo out of England and stuff like that. These are all cool other other monster movies. But you know, Godzilla and King Kong are they're they're equals. If you know what I mean. They're equals. So, what am I looking at here? Why am I thinking of Diamonds Are Forever? Anywho, Godzilla, uh, Destroy All Monsters, takes place, I think, in the 1990s, though it was filmed in the 1960s. And um, it was supposed to be the last Godzilla film. Ghidorah gets killed and everything. So, the next movie is Godzilla's Revenge. You know, to quote, or paraphrase angry video game nerd what was he getting revenge on I'm not really sure here because the Godzilla fights all happen in a boy's imagination so that's about all I can say about that one it's not really a, a sequel any more than Tomb Raider Chronicles was a sequel or Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is a sequel or David Niven's Casino Royale or as Phil Barnes likes to call it. Casino Royale, the Pink Panther version. Next movie. Um, here's where I get a little confused. There's the Smog Monster. There's Gigan. Um, there's Megalon. These are, I guess, that sounds about right. Three, three films that... They are what they are. Like, like I said, is to the point where it's like Bond. If Godzilla's Revenge is the Pink Panther Casino Royale of Godzilla, then th then these are the Roger Moores of Godzilla. <laughs> Ironically, coming out at the same time. If I'm going to use that comparison. Um. After that, um, you know, Jet Jaguar, all that stuff. Next is uh, two back-to-back -back sequels. So, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Terra of Mechagodzilla. And that concludes the original series right then and there. Um, that's it. That's the original timeline. It's completed. Um, there, yes, there is the Godzilla cartoon. I don't really know where these fit in. Maybe uh, they did come out. I believe after the the the, um, 
you know, late 70s. I, I don't know. I've got to research that more. So if they did have a timeline, it would be right there. It would be right after Terror of Mechagodzilla. And then I guess it could be said that the timeline came to an official end when the Filmation Hanna-Barbera cartoon uh, came to an end. Well, I'm just going to say an NBC cartoon, although it was shown on PB&J and um, RTV recently, as in two years ago. Or a year ago. No, just a year ago, actually. It was still on. Yeah, I used to watch it a lot on PBJ. So, the... I miss PBJ. I'll, I'll talk about PBJ after I get through Godzilla here. Um, I, I kind of address it, but I want to address it again. So, Godzilla... Godzilla's timeline has, in my opinion, two conclusions, either at the end of Terror of Mechagodzilla or at the end of the um, cartoon series, the NBC Saturday morning cartoon series. The next one is a sequel directly to Godzilla, at which point Raymond Burr's character Steve Martin goes, or quote, and I quote, and 30 years ago, for the record, they found no bones. Whatever, I don't know. Okay, more of a misquote than quote, but it's around there. And I have the Japanese version, uh, Return of... Well, it says The Return of Godzilla, but, I mean, it's it's an excellent movie, the Japanese original. The, the American translation is poor. Oh, well, that's okay. That's the way it goes. So, as, um, as far as it goes, it just, it just ties into the first movie. But it itself starts a number of sequels, Godzilla vs. Biollante, this and that, sub subseries, um, the rebirth of Mothra 1, 2, and 3. And it ends with Godzilla vs. Desidoria. In which Godzilla has a meltdown and then transfers his life force into uh, what were they were calling Godzilla Jr. or the little one or something like that. Um, what comes about this? Nothing. That's the end of that timeline. Now, there were some comics published by Dark Horse, I believe, around this time, and a few other publishers. Um, and recently, there's been Godzilla stuff published by IDW. I don't know where any of these fit into the timeline. I have read them, but I've never sat there and thought about it. If somebody wants to sit around and make a Godzilla timeline that's accurate, I can explain this, because... The next, the next series, uh, I, I think it's called the Millennium Series, starts off in, like, every movie is all of a sudden a sequel to the first Godzilla movie. So it's just, like, branching out. Um, I'm not going to count, I'm not going to count the, um, what is it? The American Godzilla in any capacity, um, but it is mentioned in it's mentioned in two different movies. In Godzilla 2000, it's mentioned and it says when they're in a Godzilla attack in New York, and they think they say, "Oh, the Americans think it was a Godzilla attack," but they don't. We know that's not, or something like that. And then obviously, Zilla shows up in Godzilla: Final Wars. Now the next two, now then, like I said, everything except um, then there's Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. No, Godzilla against yeah, Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. I'm just jumping to the end of this particular timeline. I really don't remember what comes in between all of this, but it's Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, and it has a direct sequel, to Godzilla Tokyo SOS. So these two movies go right into, um, well, Tokyo SOS is the sequel to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, which is a sequel to the original 1954 or 56 Godzilla, the Raymond Burr, oh no, that's not helpful, the original Godzilla, the first movie, King of the Monsters, so he has a queen in my opinion. From there, so American Godzilla can be definitely put into the timeline of Godzilla 2000. The Tristar 1. 
This is your brain. This is heroin. This is what happens to your brain after snorting heroin. And this is what your body goes through. It's not over yet. This is what your family goes through! And your friends! And your money! And your job! And your self-respect! And your future! Any questions? This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. And then there's, um... I don't know where the new Godzilla that just came out this year, I don't know where it fits in because I haven't seen it. And this reminds me I need to buy it. But no, I haven't seen it yet. And um, Godzilla Final Wars, to me, is a sequel to Destroy All Monsters. Because they're trying to deal with Godzilla and and uh, the son of Godzilla, whatever his name is, Vanilla or whatever, I don't know. He's running around there in that movie by Mount Fuji, but in human size. So the way I look at it is that one um, skips everything in between and go, is actually uh, the sequel to Destroy All Monsters, which is then chronologically not... Filmology. Destroy All Monsters actually takes place after Terror of Mechagodzilla, and I guess perhaps after the cartoon series. And then voila, there it is, uh, Godzilla Final Wars. So even though some of the monsters in Final Wars are from the other series, um, it really doesn't tie in uh, to any of the other series there. I guess like Godzilla 2000 ties into the TriStar one by a mere mention. So just because Zilla is in Final Wars, it, it doesn't mean anything. And then um, off on its own is obviously the Warner Brothers Godzilla that just came out. Well, just came out. Came out three years ago. Um, that's about it. I don't know where that one's going to go. Um, they, they say in the beginning that they were doing the nuclear testing in the Bikini Atoll, trying to kill Godzilla. Uh, so, I guess... I don't know what that could really tie into, to tell you the truth. It, it is its own new series. So that that's like off over there. Like poor King Kong has had this, and you know Kong Kong Skull Island or whatever it is. It just came out. Hopefully, it's the last time they do this. Uh, King Kong, um, the Dino De Laurentiis, Jeff Bridges King Kong did have a sequel with. Well, you can see a. Um, it's with L Linda Hamilton, and he finds a woman Kong and all that stuff. And then there's um, obviously the original King Kong, the son of Kong, which then ties into um, King Kong versus Godzilla, I guess. I don't know. Either that or there's a reboot. There's two Japanese Kong movies that are lost films. And it gets weird like that. All right. Now, I said I was going to talk about PBJ. PBJ was a digital television network owned by uh, uh, Lucan Entertainment and DreamWorks. Well, DreamWorks. SKG. The S. Spielberg, the K. Kratzenberg, and the G. Geffen. Two Bergs and a Fen. Um... 
today RTV does still run Saturday morning cartoons, I found out. Maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough for it. Well, you know what the problem is? Sometimes I get their channel, sometimes I don't. Unfortunately, the two cartoons they're running, the Hound Cats and the Barclays, that's it. Um, there's not very many episodes of these cartoons. They run for one hour on Saturday. That is, that is it for a national feed. I know people are like, well, RTV, whatever. Well, it is a national network covers wherever it needs to in the United States. And that's it. That's Saturday morning cartoons. Why? I don't I don't know. I mean DreamWorks I get they have some stuff like how to train a dragon or whatever. And that stuff they should have slowly eventually started putting on PVJ. And I think they left it completely in the management of Lucan while giving them material, but only Filmation or Hanna-Barbera co-productions, maybe some Ruby Spears co-productions. I mean, I don't know much about Lucan Entertainment or whatever. I just know that RTV and there was AMG and all this stuff back a decade ago. These were all small, dinky, rinky-dinky networks. So... PBJ actually had the potential and crossover appeal, I feel. Now, they didn't broadcast 24 hours, and that's where I believe was a flaw. Um, one way I, I would recommend them proved it was that they could show 16 different cartoons and repeat it three times a day. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, um, they would have a different schedule with different cartoons. So 16 different cartoons for both Saturday and then another 16 for Sunday. Uh, that would have worked out. The other thing was um, I could tell by their sponsors, real real garbage sponsors, and I feel it would have been in um, Lucan and DreamWorks' best interest to not only bring over their bigger shows like uh, the Dragons show or whatever else Netflix has, I mean not Netflix, um, DreamWorks has. Um, and yeah, yeah, Netflix would have been a good partner, but that never happened. But start bringing other things like if, you know, they have DreamWorks backing, why not start showing some DreamWorks cartoons? You know, like the Shrek. The Shrek ones, uh, that, that would have been a start. And I think that that would have been good. And then they could have got some real sponsors and real bumpers and so forth and so on. And PBJ could have gave Cartoon Network and all these other ones a real run for their money. It never happened. It won't happen. It's gone now. Another one is gone. Just like how Filmation Channel is gone. I, I never got to see that. So I don't actually know how they were doing their broadcasting. Allegedly, Kubo is still around, but I haven't seen Kubo anywhere to actually evaluate. I've seen the Kubo block um, a few times, but nothing, nothing substantial that I could get behind. And the other children blocks are pathetic. So RTV with the Houndcats and the Barclays, that's all that's left of Saturday morning. So while people are like, well, it died with Vortex and everything, it didn't. It, it was still on RTV. They were still airing cartoons. And before you say, well, those are old reruns or whatever, what do you think Vortex was? Come on. Justice League, um, Sonic X. They even ran Tiny Toons once. It was a special, but still. So, um, Hub had a Saturday morning block composed of all old cartoons. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with recycling this stuff and figuring out a way how to do it. And I, I think that um, if I had the money, I, I would do it. I would definitely do it. But I don't have the money to start a TV station, a digital TV station, and um, do any of that. Oh well. Short episode today. You know, if you want to talk about Saturday mornings or Godzilla or King Kong, coffee for Binky at gmail.com. C O F F E E number four B I N K Y at gmail.com.
This concludes our broadcast. Getting in drugs and being high, you stupid thing to do. Or being in control and saying no, it's not the easiest thing to do. Be an original and take a stand. You were free to say no. Don't let a friend push you in. Taking drugs, you got a right, yeah, yeah. You know, getting into drugs and being high is a real stupid thing to do. Being original, say no to peer pressure. Say no may be the smartest thing you ever do. You got a right to say no. You got a right to say no, no. Right to say no. Podcast day.